In this video, I'm going to try to clear up some confusion with Euler's method. But before I actually clear up the confusion with Euler's method, let me apologize for how I've been saying Euler. It's not actually Euler, it's actually Euler, uh, so it should be Euler's method. I, it's been about 10 years, 10 plus years since I've taken differential equations, and I forgot how to say his name, and I just assumed it was Euler, but it's actually Euler. Sorry about that, but now that I've gone this far, I'm just going to stick with uh Euler, and you can smile a little bit knowing that I'm mispronouncing it every single time that I say it. So, sorry about that. Okay, but let me try to, this confusion really came into play with um, SOA number 306 and uh, number 307. But before we get into that, let me just give you a better breakdown of what Euler's method actually is. Okay, so Euler's method is a way to solve a differential equation or to kind of approximate. For example, let's say we have some function g of t and we're trying to determine values at g of t. And maybe we know one of the values of g of t. Maybe we know that if I plug in time t equals 3, then I get the number 9. And let's say that I want to know what g of 2 is. Okay, So I know g of 3, I want to know g of 2, but this g of t, let's say it's really complicated, and I don't know, I, I can't write down an equation for g of t. It's just too hard for me to do. But maybe I'm able to write down what the derivative of g of t is. And because now I'm saying, how fast is g of t changing at time t? And so this is the case when we're doing this, for example, for reserves. Maybe the product is so complicated, I can't explicitly write down the reserve as a function of the time, but maybe I can say, you know, how fast is the reserve changing at time t? But for this particular example, we're going to say g of t is equal to 2t. Now, of course, this is an easy differential equation to solve, right? If I took the integral of both sides, I would just get g of t is equal to the integral of 2t dt which of course is just t squared plus some constant c, and then I use the fact that g of 3 is equal to 9, so I just plug in 3 here, and I get uh, 3 squared plus c, so 9 plus c, so clearly c is just 0, and I get g of t is t squared. Okay, so obviously g of 2 then is simply 4. But maybe um, it's not that simple when I have the derivative and I can't simply directly solve this. And that's where Euler's method comes in. So let me just draw a picture here first. So here, and all of this I'm going to say this is for, you know, g of t is for t greater than or equal to 0. And so on my y-axis I'm going to put g of t. And on my x-axis I'm going to put t. And let's say... Well, we would actually wouldn't know the graph, right? We couldn't draw the graph if we don't know what the function is. But I'm going to go ahead and draw the graph so that I can illustrate how Euler's method is actually going to work. So let me draw the graph here. Let's say it looks something like this. So this is our g of t. And, of course, we said at 3, we know the value. So for t is 3, we know the value here. It is what? 9, because that's what it was given. So pretend that's 9. And the point uh, is now I want to find the meth I want to find the value at 2. Okay? In Euler's method, what they're what we're gonna do is we're gonna use tangent lines and we're going to say the derivative of the function g of t is equal to the slope of the tangent line. Okay, and then we're gonna do some approximation. So what we need is a step size. And here I'm going to use a step size of 1, just for simplicity. So if we kind of let h, so let's let h equal to step size for this Euler's method. And I'm going to let this be uh, 1 for this particular problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is if I draw a line tangent at this point 3, okay, so I'm going to draw a line tangent, excuse my drawing here, all right. Then what I can say is the derivative at this g of 3, so let me switch back to, let's just stick with green here. So the derivative with respect to t of g of 3 is equal to the slope of this red line, right? And do you remember how to find the slope? This, this red line is just a linear line. Do you remember how to find the slope of a red line? 
It's the rise over the run. Okay, well, if I want to do the rise over the run, I need two points on this red line. I only have one point. All these other points in green are not actually touching that red line. But if I use this step size of one, this other point right here, let's put it in purple now. I'm actually trying to find the value. It's pretty close to that red line. And if I let my step size be really small, like say my step size to be 0 0.000001, it would be really close to my red line. Okay, but let's just, since we're using the step size of one, then I can say, you know what, if this purple point right here really touched my red line, then the slope from this purple point to the red point would be the rise. And so the rise is going to be, this would be my rise right here, and this would be my run. So now the slope of my line is the rise over the run, and this right here, the um, rise, is going to be this y value, if you will, this g of t value, so that's going to be g of 3, and this purple value right here is g of 2, so you see my rise is g of 3 minus g of 2, okay? And then my run is just my step size, 1. So my slope is approximately g of 3 minus g of 2, divided by my step size of 1, okay? And so now I can easily calculate the derivative, uh, you know, I just plug in 3 for my derivative up here. So let me just switch back to green. So this is 2 times 3 is the value of the derivative evaluated at time t equals 3. And then g of 3 was given as 9 minus g of 2, that's what I'm trying to find, divided by 1. And so if I solve this, I get g of 2 is 3. Okay, which obviously is not equal to 4, right? But this was an approximation. This was an approximation, so we don't get the actual value. And if I had done, instead of one step of 1, if I had, say, done 10 steps along the way to get to g of 2, I would have got something much closer to 4, right? Okay, so where's the confusion here, then, with SOA 306 and 307? Well, the reason is because I can use a derivative at 3, or, you know what I could have done? Let's draw the picture again. Let's draw the same picture. So here's our picture, g of t, t. We use a green line for the function. Okay, we got g of t here again. And we still had, if I evaluate this at 3, I still, you know, get the point 3, uh, 9. That was given. And I am still want the, the value at 2. So I still want the value here. But now, what if instead I took the derivative at 2? So now I draw my tangent line. By the way, that should be a straight line. Okay? And now I could say the derivative with respect to g of 2 is approximately. And now, again, I'm going to use the rise over the run. So I'm going to kind of say this, this is where I really want to calculate right here with this purple dot where I really want to calculate the rise over a run, but I don't know that value. But I know this value here at, say, this orange dot. This value here is 9. Okay, so I'm going to approximate this purple point on the red line with this orange point 9. Okay, so this is approximately equal to, I'll just keep that in orange, I guess. Uh, so let's draw the picture here. This is the rise over the run. And so the, the rise is g of 3 minus g of 2. So again, we have g of 3 uh, minus g of 2 over 1. Okay? And so now we plug in the derivative with respect to t of g of 2. So now I plug in 2 times 2. That's 4. Is approximately 9 minus g of 2 divided by 1. Or g of 2 is equal to 2. 5. Okay, so again, we're, we're off, again, because this is an approximation. Okay, so it depends on where you set up the derivative. Now, so in this first picture, if you will, I kind of looked back for my approximation, and on this picture, I looked forward. And the reason I looked back on this one is because I was trying to find g of 2, and I'm using the derivative at g of 3. And on this picture, I looked forward because I know g of 3. So it wouldn't have made sense to look back because I could have said, you know, I could have written this approximation here 
Uh, let's switch colors. Let's switch to, I don't know. I think this is some kind of uh, pink. I could have said this is G of 2 minus G of 1 divided by 1. It's approximately that. But I don't know G of 1. So that doesn't help me. Okay? So that's why I chose to use G of 3. So any of the formulas derived in the textbooks using Euler's method, the formula that ends up being spit out depends on whether they're looking forward or looking back. And for some unknown reason, sometimes when they use Euler's method in the book, they look forward, and sometimes they look back, and then they give this general formula. So that's why it's probably not a good idea to memorize those general formulas. So for example, for the reserve, I would just remember how to take the derivative with respect to t of the reserve, set up that equation, and then you can just say, you know, should I look forward or should I look back? So for example, on number 306, let me just, we don't need all this stuff now, so let's just, let's just uh, go to a new page here. So for example, on 306, I think they said, let me, let me pause the video and double check real quick. Okay, I actually just went ahead and pasted in these problems here. So I'm told that you approximate 4V using Euler, really Euler's, method with step size 0.5 using the derivatives at times 4 and 4.5. Okay, so basically I'm going to set up my derivative with respect to T function, and I'm going to use 4, and I'm going to use the derivative at 4.5. Okay, so now I knew, let's draw my picture so I, let's say this is TV and this is T. I don't really know what the, it could look like that. It could look like this. I, I don't really know what the, the function looks like. But basically I do know that this is a five-year warranty. And I know that um, it's kind of endowment insurance because if the phone is not broken, the warranty pays 1000 at the end of five years. So I know that 5V is equal to 100. So I know the value at time five. This I know. This I know. So I'm going to want to use what I know, 5V. So when I set up these two derivatives, and what I want to know is 4V. So for example, I could choose to say, you know, at four, I can, so here's the picture at four, and here's my tangent line. Whoops, let's do here, and here's four, and there's my tangent line. Should have, done, should have done that in a different color. Let me do that in a different color. So here's my function, and here's my tangent line. I could look back, so I could say, you know, this is approximately 4 point, or 4v minus 3.5v divided by 0 0.5, and then this is approximately 4.5v minus 4v divided by 0 0.5. But then, what's the problem here? I have unknown, 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 unknown. I've got one, two, three unknowns and two equations. That's no good. So instead, what I'll do is I'll say, you know what, a better way, let's put this in green, since this is the way to go, is to say if I look forward, so 4.5v minus 4v divided by 0.5, and uh, again, I look forward at 4.5. This is 5v minus 4.5v divided by 0.5. Then this is known. I know this value. It's equal to 100. And now I have two unknowns, 4v and 4.5v. So I have two equations and two unknowns, and I can solve for 4v. Okay? So this one I'm going to want to look forward when I approximate my derivative. Now let's jump to 307, and now it says I'm using the derivatives at time 4.5 and 5, okay? So the derivative with respect to t at 4.5v and the derivative with respect to t at 5v. Well, let's start with the 5v. If I look forward, then it's 5.5v minus, so let me just write that down for a second, 5.5v minus 5v divided by 0 0.5, which doesn't even make sense because this policy is over after five years. So what I really want is I want to look back now. 5v minus 4.5v divided by 0, which again, will look it's just fine to do that. Here's t of v, here's t. Let's say it looks like this. So this is t of v, and here's 5, okay? 
And so that is the point five five V, because that's my function. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm using this, okay, and I'm saying here at four point five, this rise over this run is approximately obviously the run is four is a point five and the rise is approximately um g of five or five v minus four point five v. So that's approximately the run. And the rise is approximately oh sorry, that's the run or the rise. The rise is approximately that, and the run is approximately 0.5, because I'm approximating this point here, I'm approximating with this little point there. So this is the way I want to do it. And then this one, again, if I'm looking, uh, I need to stay consistent. So if I'm looking backwards on this one, then I'm going to look backwards on this one, 4.5V minus 4V divided by 0.5. And so this was known, this was a, just 100, and so I know I have one unknown, two unknowns, two equations, and I can solve for 4V. So I hope that clears up the confusion on uh, Euler slash Euler's method, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.